Good evening, I'm Carly Boyette, and I am so happy you're joining me tonight for good news on entertainment. First up tonight is Mike Weaver, the front man of one of the most beloved bands in Christian music, Big Daddy Weave. They have hits like The Lion and the Lamb, All Things New, and the song Redeemed. In fact, Redeemed is the song that Christian artist Zach Williams has said is what helped turn his life back to God. But it's Big Daddy Weave's latest hit, Heaven Changes Everything, that is the focus for tonight. It's a song he helped write after the passing of his brother just a couple years ago. Heaven Changes Everything is also the name of their tour this fall. In the And anytime you talk with anybody in the industry, your name always comes up and everyone just always says how full of the Holy Spirit you are, how joyful you are. And I'm just so excited to get a, a few minutes with you before you get super, super busy, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, it's, it's awesome to talk with you. Thanks for thanks for having me on. Yeah. So talk about, I guess we have to lead with, of course, the tour is Heaven Changes Everything. That mm -hmm. is the song, the, the, the latest song that's out right now. And I just love this perspective because, you know, I just, you know, heaven is one of those things. I was talking about it with my kids in the car. They were asking me questions about heaven uh, this morning and they're hard to answer sometimes with the kiddos. But when you fully grasp what we have on this earth and what we have to look forward as best as we can, again, because I know it's hard to explain, it does change everything, every aspect mm -hmm. of our life. And that song is so beautifully put. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we wrote that song just dealing with loss, man. We really was we were really hurting from missing my little brother, Jay, who uh, went to be with the Lord at the beginning of 2022. And I was sitting in a writer room uh, with a good friend of mine. Man, Matthew West is just such an amazing songwriter. You know, I mean, he just goes through the day and whatever, whatever he sees, he like can turn into a song. It's, it's incredible. And uh, Matthew West and my friend Jeff Pardo, we were over at Jeff's house sitting in his like little studio and they were just kind of letting me fall apart to tell you the truth and just kind of hearing about what we'd been through and, at one point in it, though, I was like, gosh, I don't know what it would be like for somebody who doesn't know the Lord to like go through this. If we didn't have the hope of heaven, then I, do, I don't know how we would even get through this right now. It just hurts, you know, and, I, and we just sort of said it right there. I guess I guess heaven changes everything, doesn't it? And Matthew is instantly just like, you know, that's that's the song right there, you know, and then we just we started writing and, and it really is. It, it changes everything about our perspective today. It has, it's about our outlook about tomorrow. The fact that this life is not all that there is, but because it's not all that there is, the troubles of today pale in comparison to the glory that we're going to get to embrace, man. We're going to get the experience in full. But what I also love though, um, we were talking a minute ago about, uh, you know, off, off session or whatever mm -hmm. about the chosen, you know, uh -huh. and everywhere. I mean, I just, I love watching that show. I love watching Jesus and the disciples and imagining what it was like. And it gives us a great way to look at that everywhere. Jesus goes, he's talking about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And he says that not only is the kingdom of heaven somewhere we're going, but he says that the kingdom of heaven is with inside of us, he says. He said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And everywhere he went, he put on display the power and authority of the king of that kingdom, right? And it's like, I, I love that. And that same, that same power and that same presence and that same kingdom lives within us. So it can change everything about today right now, even beyond our perspective of what's to come. You know, I love that. How is it? I, I'd imagine you've been singing it on stage now for a little while, but it's got to be pretty um, powerful and maybe even overwhelming to sing that song, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that your brother's not there with you here on this side of uh, eternity uh, at the moment. But what that means, um, how is that? That's got to be tough at times. It's every, it's every kind of emotion. You know, that's what yeah. I found in grief, you know, and, 
and it is a season though. And I, I have learned this, that it, it's something that I had always dreaded. And it's something that even as a person of faith, I kind of didn't know how to really embrace a little bit because I'm like supposed to have the spiritual statement to say, not just that it just hurts really bad because I, I wish that he was here right now, you know, and it's okay to have those times and you just need to fall apart with it. But the great thing is, is we don't stay there. You know, that's what the Bible says. We, we don't, we grieve like people who don't have hope, right? We, we grieve like people, not like people who don't have hope. We grieve with like with those who have hope in the Lord, right? And so that's the thing is even after we've hurt for a little while, we remember, man, this is not the end of this for us. This is, this is only the beginning for us. In fact, when we step out of the confines of this life, it's really just getting started. And so, but this life is precious. And so it makes today so, so valuable to live today, you know, in light of eternity, right? And this is what I love about music and songs. Um, And and as much as I love movies and TV shows as well, a song is only sometimes maybe two, three minutes. And it Mm. can help flip that light switch on and give you that perspective, which this song um, is doing as well. So job well done. I think this message is just so needed. Um, I did want it while I had you on the line here. I thought... um, because I don't, I'm sure you've probably heard him say it, uh, I know, before, but he's been talking about it recently and the ripple effects of your songs. And Zach mm. Williams is another one of my uh, oh, favorite Zach. artists. And he just, like another couple of weeks ago, was talking about how your song, Redeemed, I mean, it changed his life. This mm. is what songs and music do. But I know it's not him. It's You've heard it from you know people just listening in the car as well. You know, and it, and it is only only Jesus can do that with a song. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Because there's no part of the songwriting process where you're like, all right, guys, now this is the part where the wayward rock star or whatever is running off in Spain. And yet, nobody can do that. Only Jesus can do that, you know. But that's really, that's the same thing. I don't mean to keep coming back to Chosen, but it's the loaves and fish, you know. Yeah. When we give, we, we just give Jesus what we have. That's all he's asking. He's not, he's not asking us to, to be powerful, right? You know what I mean? He is powerful and he just wants us to let him live through us, you know? And I wish I could tell you I was awesome at that, but I'm really, I'm, I'm really not. I'm really not, I'm not even 50%. You know what I mean? It's like I, not only, only Jesus can do the things that he does, you know? And I think, I thank God that he can use anybody that, you know? And that story, when we heard that story, we were flabbergasted, you know, and we just were so grateful to God. That's what, that's what he can do through our lives. So then it makes me feel like, well, what else can you do then God, you know, and it makes me have faith for, for the future, but in him and what he does. Right. Yeah, I know. Well, invite everybody out uh, to the concert and the tour and what you're hoping. Uh, You've partnered with some great other artists, a big fan of Tasha Layton as well. And um, kind of what's the, how do you, when you piece these together with other artists and things, I mean, kind of how does that work? Because it is so fun to see everybody kind of switch around and going on tour together. And um, with this particular group and tour, what are your kind of thoughts? What are you looking forward to? Well, I just love it because, I mean, Tasha Layton is is amazing, you know, and she's, I mean, she's taking over Christian radio, you know, you hear Tasha Layton's song every few minutes, you know, look what you've done. And I love that she takes these lyrics that she kind of flips them, like her latest song is like never, you know, it's like the, the never though is like, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to give up on me. You're never going to, you know, and I, I just, I think that's clever and I love it. And I mean, she the way she comes across is so, is so amazing. She's so like put together and she's so even keel and there's a joy about her. And this is what they said that she, well, she said when at the beginning of this, she, because they were, I'm sure way bigger offers than big daddy week there, mm-hmm. you know? Well, <laughs> and she, and she, and she was like, I just heard that you guys minister. And she goes, that's what I want to be about. And, mm-hmm. and I was like, and I was just like, Tasha Layton, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be an awesome fall. You know, if we go into this looking at God, what do you want to do tonight? You know, um, he always has something he wants to do, by the way, you know, he's never in short supply. He's always looking for the one that he'd leave the 99 for. Isn't that amazing? I've been the one who he left the 99 for like way too often. You know what I mean? And probably on this tour, you know what I mean? And, and he shows up and he shows up in ways that only he can do, you know, I love, I love it. We were at a thing the other night in Michigan. I'm sorry to get off into this. No, but I, no, I love it. it. 
And man, we were just, we kind of came to this place where it wasn't even us really praying for people. It was just like saying, Hey, if you imagine you're the person in line and you're next to stand in front of Jesus for, to expect God for a miracle, to expect him to do something. You're like, what is it that you would ask him for? Because he said he would never leave you. He would never forsake you. He's here right now. Jesus is right here. And he, he's the same yesterday, yeah. today, and forever. So let's ask him. Let's come to Jesus. What is it that hurts? What is it that's it's broken? What is it that it seems impossible, you know? And we bring it to Jesus. And then Jesus is the one who meets us there, you know? And so I'm, I'm so excited. Our friend Hannah Kerr is out on tour with us. Her husband, Jason and Hannah, they are, they're so amazing. Jason uh, is kind of uh, plays in her band and uh, it is so awesome, man. Every night of the last couple of tours we've been on, they've been there and out every night after they get to play their set, praying for people and seeing God move. Um, it's just the most special friendship. And now that Tasha is, is coming on board too, it's just going to be an awesome fall. I'm really looking forward to fall like something pumpkin spice something you know what i mean and then the <laughs> lord just doing his thing on tour, you know? well, when you come to florida which is where i am i'm not sure if yes. it'll feel a whole like fall no, uh, there yet is no fall in florida i grew up in florida and so there is no yep. there's no fall in florida right yeah i know i know but we're so happy to have you here i'll still drink my pumpkin spice uh, latte <laughs> anyway yeah, yeah you can make a virtual background right like this or whatever and then you can uh It'll look like fall back there in Florida. Turn the air conditioning down enough and it'll be beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I just, uh, man, I can't thank you enough for using your gifts and your talents and your music and your songs to minister to people and um, for sharing your heart. And again, you're just so joyful. You can tell that you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And oh, I'm just excited to see where God's going to continue uh, to use you and help change lives and people's you know, directions of where they're headed. So and that's so awesome man I, I just thank the lord in advance for what he's gonna do and yep. i thank you for having me on today thanks for chatting you're so you're such a positive force to be reckoned with that's <laughs> awesome man. i love it For more info on the tour and to find out when they are coming to a city near you, go to BigDaddyWeave.com. Okay, you just heard Mike mention The Chosen. Well, tonight we continue with one of the spiritual advisors of the hit series. Rabbi Jason Sobel has a new book out called Signs and Secrets of the Messiah, A Fresh Look at the Miracles of Jesus. Well, Rabbi Jason, it's such an honor to get some time with you. I told you before we got started just how thankful I am for your work with The Chosen. That's how I have first uh, learned about you and gotten to know you a little bit and your expertise and everything that you've contributed to that show. And I just know so many are so thankful, um, you know, for bringing your perspective on that series. I'm sure you hear that just uh, all the time. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. It's been a blessing to... Uh be part of the chosen as a spiritual advisor from the very beginning before it was ever created. And we took Dallas and the team to Israel and walked in the footsteps. It's one of the things we love to do, but it's, uh, it's great to be with you. Thanks. Let's talk about this latest uh, book that you've put out and why you wanted to go this route and really looking at the miracles uh, that Jesus performed. Why was that? Um, I mean, I can, I'm surprised it actually wasn't done earlier because I do feel like it is so fascinating to really zoom in on the importance of these miracles and how they were orchestrated from beginning to end, the detail in them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we live in a world where there is a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of hopelessness because there's so much instability and uncertainty going around. And so therefore, I think it's so important to look at the miracles because the miracles of Jesus contain a promise for each and every one of us. And they're meant to elicit hope in our hearts. And hope is the belief that your future is better than your past. You can look at the natural world and all the craziness that's going on. But when you look at the miracles and you see the details, you understand God is in control and he's bigger than anything that's going on in the world around us. 
I told you before we got started, I literally just got back at the time of our conversation here. I was just out in Yellowstone um, and seeing Montana and this beautiful state. And it just reminded me so much of um, how God works in the beauty of the vastness and how large everything that he's created and, and the honest of that. But then also, like I'm staring at River Rock, you know, there's this river behind our home and just the small details um, in everything. And you actually in your book, what I loved, I mean, I have goosebumps when I read it because I just I just if more people really understood this, you say it's about the sign miracles and secrets of the Bible. And you say the Bible is like a multifaceted diamond. It's many sides contribute to a brilliance. There are many ways to read Bible texts that are complementary and never contradictory. It's not worthless, but worthwhile to look at every word from many uh, angles. You compare it to an ocean shallow enough for any child and deep enough that you can't explore all of it. This is what makes the, the book so different than any other human author. And you say that's why the Bible needs to be read repeatedly. Expand on that a little bit because I just love, I, I'm fascinated and you do such a great job in, in kind of opening our eyes to that on, on really making sure we understand the Bible differently. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, one of the things, uh, one of the funny stories is one year right before the Super Bowl, I went out and bought a high definition television. Everyone's like, it's going to change the way you see the game. And I was so excited. I'm like, this isn't that great. And then towards the end of the game, I'm flipping through the channels and I have a revelation. The higher channels are the HD channels. I watched the whole game in standard definition. And when I saw it in HD, I'm like, man, it really does make a difference. And when you understand how the details come together, and you understand it in its original Hebrew Jewish context, it makes the Bible come alive. God is not boring. Every detail is there for a reason. There's always more God wants us to discover and he wants to show us. And I think part of the beauty of getting into the details, like why is the first miracle on the third day? Why six known pots? Why 153 fish? Why? Bread and fish and the miracle of multiplication. Why was the man paralyzed for 38 years at the pool? But that's, when you understand that all these details have deeper meaning and significance, part of also what it tells us is just like God is in the details of the Bible, God is in the details of our life. And that's part of the encouragement that we should get from understanding God is the God of details. Amen. I love it. I'm so thankful there's a chapter in the book, Is It Possible to Do Miracles Today? Because if I'm honest, and I think um, some others would relate as well, there's almost this hesitation of, you know, it was so grand and so big there when, when Jesus was on the earth doing miracles. And I think we have a hard time. We never want to disappoint others. We don't want to be foolish. We don't there's just this real, you know, and I think we need to talk about that more and be honest about that. And that I think a lot of us like myself go, I don't know, is God still doing those big miracles? They're not going to look exactly like that, but I've seen him in my own life. Absolutely. I mean, I think sometimes we settle for half a gospel. We settle for good news, but not good enough news. And I think part of that is that, you know, one of the first things that happened when we talk about it in the book is when I came to faith, like a week or two later, I had a homeless friend that needed to have both legs amputated. I'm a new believer, but I just read the Gospels, the book of Acts. And I was like, OK, people can get healed, you know, through God, faith in God and laid hands on this man. And God, he, he got healed his legs. He didn't need to get them amputated. And he got out of bed and he walked out of the hospital and I was like, oh my goodness, God is real. And these miracles are real. And I was a new believer. So it wasn't like I had this deep faith or I cultivated years of, you know, walking with God. I think it's just a matter of the fact that the miracles are meant to show the heart of God, his love and compassion. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says greater things than these that we can do. And he did these miracles after he was baptized by John and the Holy Spirit comes up, it comes up him. He calls as a man empowered by the spirit. Yes, he was God, 
but he didn't do the miracles out of his divinity. He did it out of his humanity, anointed by the Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that lives in us. And for that reason, when Jesus says greater things than these you can do, we have to take them at face value. It doesn't mean we always are going to see miracles, but we need to take a risk for God. And even just the act of praying for someone, that in itself is healing for people that someone cares enough to even take the time to do that. Mm -hmm. Why do you think, I think it's funny. I watched the chosen uh, with my 10 year old daughter and I, I remember her asking, I had a chance to talk with Dallas about this as well. And it's so interesting to watch it in that context of Jesus doing all these miracles. And yet people, you know, people still didn't believe, you know, I mean, isn't that fascinating that, it could happen right in front of people, these miracles. And I think we still are missing out on those today. <laughs> yeah. I mean, many of the miracles in The Chosen we talk about in the book, Signs and Secrets. And I think it reminds me of when we talk about in the book, we talk, and this, I love this episode in The Chosen. It's the miracle at the Pool of Bethesda. And there's a man who is there 38 years, not able to walk. And if there's a detail in the Bible, it's, it's there for a reason. God doesn't waste words. So why 38 years? Well, the first thing is 38 is actually the number of years that Israel wandered in the wilderness because of their unbelief. Okay, they were in the desert 40, but 38 because of unbelief, right? When God says in the second year, you're going to die, that generation was going to die in the wilderness. So why is that important? Because Yeshua asked this man, do you want to be made well? It's like, duh, of course, why wouldn't he want to be made well? But he had gone through 38 years of trauma and pain. And oftentimes those things can be de define our identity. We get stuck in those places and it's hard to move past them. They become so part and parcel of who we are. So when Jesus asks this man, do you want it made well? He doesn't say, yes, please. Yes. Right now he gives an excuse. Well, there's no one to pick me up. There's no one to put me in the water. This man was like the children of Israel that came out of Egypt. They were stuck in a slave mentality. It's like Israel who saw the miracles and wanted to stone Moses and go back to Egypt. Really? After you've seen all of that. And it was the same with this man. And it's the same with many of us. Sometimes we lose hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. What Jesus was saying to this man for 38 years, he was saying, listen, if you stay in your cynicism and your unbelief and the pain and the trauma of your past, you will die like this, like Israel died in the desert because of their unbelief. But if you trust me, and take up, rise, take up your bed and walk like I'm asking. You will not stay stuck, but you will step out of your past into the promise of your future. Jesus is the open, op, ultimate hope dealer. And what he's saying is your future can be better than your past. I love that. Uh, maybe just expand on that as we get ready to close here, because I would love you to. Um, I think a lot of us, um, and I say us because I've been there at times before, we want to see God work miracles. We want to. And I think so many of us sometimes miss out on what God has for us and what he can do um, for us. Um, so if there is anyone struggling or, again, really wants to see God do a miracle in their life or they're not feeling like God is as present, you know, as maybe what they hear others, you know, in their life. What, how do you begin that process? Do you think, how do you, how, how would you encourage somebody, you know, to, to really partake in this life that God wants an abundance of him? You know, I think we talk about in the chapter of the healing of the man, you know, born blind from birth, an incredible miracle. Jesus spits in the mud places the mud in his eyes with, you know, it's like, that's a weird miracle. We have to understand this man was blind from birth. So Jesus takes DNA from his spit. It contains DNA. Divine DNA puts it in his eyes, transforms him by transference of this divine DNA. But I think part of the thing we have to understand is there's two types of faith. There's I faith. I faith is like, I'll believe it if I can see it. Okay. But then there's a mouth type of faith. Think about it for a moment. In the very beginning at creation, God said, let there be light before he saw the light. God spoke it before he could see it. It's a deeper level of faith. And so I think that 
God calls things that are not as if they were. And I think we have to make a decision. Is Jesus who he says he is? Is his word and are his promises true? And do we have the faith to pray for it and to press in for it and to believe God can do it even when we can't see it or it seems impossible and improbable? And I think that's where sometimes we just have to keep, we just have to keep praying, keep believing, even in, in spite of all the odds. You know, real quick, there was a, a woman who I did this event, we, we talked about in the book, and she had, she had been dealing with a number of illnesses, including the flow of blood and Hashimoto's disease, a number of things. And she heard me praying for people and she didn't want to come forward. She was the person we rented the venue from, but God prompted her to come forward. She'd been prayed so many times and never got healed. She had totally been disheartened, thinking she never would get healed. She came down. She's like, I'm gonna give it one more chance. It was like the hundredth time. And that day, God healed her unexpectedly, even when she had lost hope. You just never know. It could be 38 years, but then God shows up and he does it. You just don't know, but he can do it. That's the point. And he's done it in my life. And I think um, what I love telling people is ask God to, re you know, to reveal himself, you know, keep asking, you know, to, to show up. That's what he wants to do, right? He wants to be with us. Um, well, Signs and Secrets of the Messiah is such a great book. I think if anyone is in need of a miracle in their own life and maybe struggling with, I don't know, could God do this miracle? I think it's just a great read to encourage them. And I cannot thank you enough for all that you've done with The Chosen and sharing your perspective on everything. And uh, I'm excited that uh, I just know there's so much more to come. And I look forward to learning more from you as well. Oh, thank you. Shalom, shalom. And uh, as we've just entered into a new year on the Hebrew calendar, the Jewish New Year, I wish you a sweet and blessed new year. The year of the open door. May God open incredible doors for you and everyone who's listening and watching. The book is available wherever books are sold, including Amazon. And by the way, The Chosen is getting ready to host Chosen Con 2023. Rabbi Jason Sobel will be one of the featured guests, while many fans of the series will be flying in from all over the world. There is a chance to join virtually on October 14th and 15th. You will hear from some of your favorite cast members, creators, and special guests, and special sneak peeks at season four as well. It's going to be a great time. For more info, just go to ChosenCon2023.com. All right, that's all for tonight. I hope you enjoyed tonight's show, and I look forward to seeing you right here next week on your Christian television network. Mm -hmm.